Hello learners welcome back I am Dr Neetu Shukla will be discussing with you the objectives of teaching literature What does literature mean to you Whenever we think about literature then we realize that okay we might be reading a novel a drama maybe an essay an autobiography or biography so there are different genres of literature which are available and many genres are being used in the textbooks which are being introduced in the elementary school so as a language teacher you will be encountering such texts while teaching english language skills to your learners now many times these teachers they ask that why do we need to have literature as a content in our textbooks we should know the reasons behind it some of the reasons we will be looking at today first and foremost when we talk about literature then we should not forget that we are actually exposing our learners to a rich linguistic input so various forms of writings are being introduced to the learners so whether it is advertisement or you have poster or if you have a short story or a narrative text or an expository text or a persuasive essay all these forms of literature are orienting the learners to the different ways in which language can be used in day to day life it is also preparing them for any future vocation that they might take up for instance if somebody wants to aspires to be a journalist then he would be interested in reading a report a newspaper article so literature orients the learners to all these forms of writing another thing is that when we look at such a variety of texts which is available in literature and it is given to the learners in the form of a poem in the form of a short story or anecdote or if you have the cartoons the comics then the learning environment in the classroom it is enhanced considerably it becomes very interesting so you know that when there is variety you will definitely enjoy you will not get bored so that interest of the learners will be aroused in that particular language and when the interest is there definitely they will be motivated to work in that particular language to aspire to become a good user of that particular language so it is very essential that if we want our learners to improve their language skills they are motivated to work in that particular language they are motivated to exercise to use those language skills in their day to day life in the various tasks which are set for them in the classroom another advantage of having literature is that it stimulates the learners for communication so if you have an essay written by somebody talking about the benefits of a particular equipment then after reading it as a reader you might react to it by either agreeing and supporting that particular thing perspective or view or you might totally reject it so after reading that particular text you are getting that desire to react to show your reaction to respond to that particular text so it becomes an excellent stimulus for learners to communicate in the particular language and as we have already discussed literature gives as an opportunity to introduce our learners to the various genres of writing further it stimulates multiple senses when you read a poem the diverse images which are being used by the poet the similes the metaphors personification all the poetic devices which are being used doesn't it stimulate your mind the various senses whether it is of sight or smell or touch so language the colorful use of language stimulates the sensory being of the individual so makes him more responsive to the language that is being used and presented in the text further it caters to diverse learning style as well so when we talk about multiple intelligences as gardner presented so there might be a learner who has this linguistic intelligence and he learns well if he is given different types of text to interact with so when we are exposing our learners to different varieties or different forms of writing we are catering to this need individual need of the learners the diverse learning style of the learners to visually see something to listen to that particular story and appreciate it 
to listen to that poem and then appreciate it. It also develops cultural sensitivity. So as, a, as an Indian sitting in this particular country, if you read a text which is based in England or America, then you will be able to become sensitive to the practices, the social roles, the social status, the social way of interacting in the society in a particular country. Or within the country also, if you read a text which is uh, situated in suppose uh, uh, Kerala or Trivandrum or in some other parts of the country, you will be able to get a more, a much better understanding of the cultural norms of that particular group, community. So, exposing our learners to different learners, also different texts, also help in developing cultural sensitivity amongst them. Then it is always said that when we talk about literature, it is an avenue for expressing our thoughts and ideas on so many themes, on universal themes such as humanity, war, peace, which may not necessarily be presented to the learners in the actual school learning environment. Because when we talk about the school curriculum, we have mathematics, we have science, we have uh, co-curricular activities of the sports and all these things are happening. But it's only in literature that we get that scope of widening the experience of the learners in terms of all these areas. Talking about conflict uh, which is happening uh, internationally. The various peace initiatives which have been taken place, which are being taken, uh, you know, happening uh, the world around. So literature provides the learners an ample opportunity to interact on so many platforms. Another thing is that literature uses representational language. It involves the whole learner, cognitive as well as effective. So when I am reading the text, I am also empathizing with the character. I am also understanding that why this character is reacting in this way. How the character is going to respond in the subsequent paragraphs. So the learner as a whole is engaged in the text. As we have already discussed, literature also introduces the multiple genres and their styles such as advertising, poster, short story, cartoon, play and so on. Thus, literature holds immense potential for all-round personality development. So if they read a text drawn from the life of an eminent personality such as Swami Vivekananda or Gandhiji, then the values which were upheld by these people, by these luminaries, will definitely impinge on the mind of the reader, of the learner. So it has immense capability of influencing the personality development of the learners as well. The literature also gives an opportunity to introduce authentic material. So, when we talk about posters or when we talk about uh, advertisements, these are the actual stuff which is being, which the learner sees around him. So, he will become more conscious of the language which is being used in his environment as well when he gets to see it in the textbook as well. Further, literature evokes creative response amongst the learners. So, when they read a text, they respond to it and they can choose to respond in their own way. It may not necessarily be the one which is expressed by the writer or that which is expressed by you as a teacher. As a language teacher, we should allow the learners to share their responses, their feelings, their emotions about how they felt after reading that particular text. So that creative response is also probable only when they are exposed to different forms of literature. As a language teacher, when we are using literature in our classroom, it gives us ample opportunity to emphasize meaning making as well. This is what I was just talking about, that let the learners read a particular text and record their responses to it without any feeling of being right or wrong in their understanding. But whatever they say, let them justify it from the facts which they have been able to glean from that particular text. That why do they believe and why do they say like that? There must be some reason behind it. There must be something which they have found within the text, within those lines. Let them come up with that particular explanation. 
Now when we talk about literature, another question that comes to our mind is that which literature should we use? Now here I would refer to John Macri, 1994, who distinguished between literature with a capital L, the classical texts such as those of Shakespeare, Charles Dickens and others and literature with a small l which refers to popular fiction, fable, song, lyrics, etc. So in the textbooks you will find that many a time the content writers they use both kind of texts. If suppose you feel that the texts which have been selected are not to the level of the learner or not to the liking of the learner, you are free to select a text of your own and use it for your particular class and learners. So various types of literary texts which you can use include short stories, songs, poems, biography, autobiography, essays, novel, one act plays just as we discussed a little while before. Now inherent in the use of literature are many challenges also. If literature is not used appropriately in the classroom then it can become a really tedious and boring task for the learners. If it just becomes an activity where they have to read a particular text and then answer questions following it without any scope for discussions, without any scope for sharing of the experiences, then it will not really help them in developing their language skills. So some of the challenges we will be looking at. First challenge is that of text selection. Now the text which has been selected for teaching in that particular class should be age appropriate. What is the age of the learners? Will they be able to appreciate the theme of that particular text? Another thing is, is it something of their interest and liking? If it is not interesting, they will not feel like reading it. And if they are not reading it, then somewhere or the other, your purpose of making them read a text and develop their reading comprehension skills gets defeated. Another thing is that the context should be appropriate. The local context, the place where the learners are sitting. The text which you are selecting, it should not be something which they cannot relate to or they cannot really appreciate. Then another very important thing is that while you are selecting a text, the linguistic difficulty should also be kept in mind. If, it, if the words which are being used in that particular text or the expressions which are being used in the text are too difficult for the learners, they will not be able to appreciate, they will not be able to generate that interest and motivation to read further, to complete reading that particular text. Hence again, whatever you have planned for your lesson, it will go waste because they are not getting motivated enough, they are getting discouraged. The moment they come across a word of which they are not able to find a meaning or they are not able to visualize it from a particular context, they will lose interest. So you as a teacher are also getting defeated. So whenever you are selecting a text, you have to ensure that the text selection is appropriate as per the age, the interest, the context and linguistic difficulty of the learners. Suppose the text is already given in your textbook and you have to read it along with the learners, then certain kind of pre-reading tasks can be set. You can prepare the learners of what to expect from that particular text. Certain vocabulary items which are essential for understanding and appreciating that text may be discussed and presented before you actually ask them to read. So this can help you in resolving this problem. Another aspect of literature which needs to be considered is the length. Now if the text is too lengthy, the learners again will lose interest. So it has to be of an appropriate length. You have to see to it that you are dividing your text into chunks which are meaningful in which the learners can relate to in the subsequent sessions as well. As we discussed earlier, the literature is also a source for developing cultural sensitivity amongst the learners. So whatever text which is being selected for the learners to read in a particular classroom, you have to first read it as a teacher and see to it that there is nothing which offends the sensitivity of the learners. So that cultural sensitivity should also be checked by the teacher. Another aspect is the cultural difficulty. The learners should be with such a background and context that they are able to appreciate the other culture which is being represented in a particular text. So it should not be too dense or too complex for them to understand. It should be 
as per the linguistic ability of the learners. So that's where your role as a teacher comes in, that you have to see to it that the text which is being selected is such that they are able to relate well and they are able to comprehend it as well. Another thing is that many a time what happens in literature classroom, the teachers are too much concerned with this fact that okay, this chapter is given, the learner should be able to read that particular text and whatever questions are given in between the text or at the end of the text, the exercises which are given, they have to be completed. Call that the, for the sake of record, everything should be, you know, completed. And this is from where the examination questions also turn up. So whether the learners are able to appreciate the text or not, enjoy it or not, the teacher is just geared towards one objective that the chapter should be completed, the reading should be uh, you know, completed and all the exercises should be done in their notebook and corrected. So here a note of caution is there that as a teacher you should remember the text is there for you to use it as an aid for developing the language skills of the learner. So it could be listening, speaking, reading, writing. Right. So you need not aim for a complete understanding of the entire material. It generally happens in the case of poems where the teacher is too conscious of explaining each and every line of that particular poem. So as a teacher, take it a little lightly and ensure that you are engaging the learners, if not complete, at least a partial understanding of the study material. Next, we should also see to it that the children's reaction to the study material should also be given opportunity. So just completing the exercises at the back of the uh, book is not sufficient. Nowadays though the textbooks have been written in such a form that there are a variety of tasks which are being said which are also interesting also. So there are lots of puzzles and crosswords which are being used and you have a number of language games also which are introduced. If your textbook is such that it provides for a variety of activities, variety of questions, then it's good enough, you can use them. But if suppose you feel that it is not interesting, it is not something which is engaging the learners in giving a response to that particular text, then you are free to add and design your own set of worksheets to meet the requirement of that particular text because we should remember that the text is to be used for developing the language skills or developing the accuracy of the learners in the use of grammar. So when you ask them to read a poem and you ask them to comment or provide a summary of it, then you should not be too particular of whatever they are saying should be, you know, exactly what you want them to say or exactly what the writer intended to say. Let them share their own experience, let them give their own individual comment because when they will be doing it, they will be using the language, they will be speaking about it. So their speaking skills is getting enhanced, at least they are conveying something, at least they are predicting something or they are drawing some inference from the text. So all these are skills which, are, which the learner is practicing by the means of this particular text. So as we discussed earlier, the literature should provide ample opportunities to the learners for creative expressions. So maybe after reading a particular text or story uh, or an essay or uh, a short story, you can ask them to imagine that okay, this is the main character and he lives uh, in such and such place, you want to uh, write a letter to that particular person. So write a letter to that particular person. Or if suppose there is some incident in that particular story where an advertisement has to be you know, uh, put up, then you can ask the learners to imagine all the other details and design an advertisement for the character of that particular story. Or you know, there can be so many things, you can change the form of the text, that okay, after reading that particular uh, uh, essay, uh, what emotion was evoked in you, compose a poem on that. So what you are doing is that allowing the learners to play with language, to enjoy using the language. So definitely when they are enjoying something, they will be developing it as well. Further, we must encourage our learners to seek logical relationship among events and appreciate the ideas and emotions which are expressed in a piece of literature. So whatever they are saying, whatever they are doing, there has to be some logical relationship. So they should be able to identify that in the piece of work which is presented to them and when they are writing their own piece of work or when they are conveying it orally then they should keep this 
thing in their mind that that logical uh, connection should be established between the various forms. So the various skills which can be developed during uh, the teaching of literature in the English classroom includes various skills such as the reading comprehension skills. So they read the text and then it can be followed by uh, various uh, exercises or activities which involve uh, literal comprehension you just ask them that okay what is this who said that where did he say, uh, say that and why did he uh, you know uh, why did this happen another set of questions can be that you ask them something which is based on some reasoning inferential questions why did this happen this way why did he react in this way then another level of questioning is when you ask them to critically respond to that particular text that as a reader do you agree with how the particular character behaved or reacted to that particular situation if you were in that place how would you react so these reading comprehension skills also gets nurtured when they are exposed to literature another thing is that definitely when they are getting exposed to different genres they develop the skill of concentrating on a particular text understanding its format understanding the language the way it is being used. As I said earlier, critical thinking skills are also nurtured when they are dealing with the text and when they are uh, critically uh, reviewing the way the text has been written by the particular writer, do they agree with it or if they were given an opportunity to rewrite that particular text, how would they uh, you know, give it a different angle. So critical thinking skills also get enhanced by way of interacting with such kind of different uh, genres of literature which are available in the textbooks. It also helps them control their thought process because they have to logically organize all the ideas. And of course, when they are reading a variety of texts, then a positive attitude also gets built up. So there are numerous opportunities of personality development also, which are provided by cultural references. So, so many values and ideas, they are embedded in the text. If there are essays written by some known people or there are some letters which are written by uh, a known personality to uh, their daughters or to their uh, sons and others, then all these texts give an opportunity for the learners to see how a particular individual felt about a particular thing. What did they value and why did they value and what was the result of that thing when they upheld a particular value then how they benefited out of it, how the society as a whole uh, benefited out of it. It develops study skills as well. So they learn the skill of using and referring to dictionary whenever they are not able to find the meaning of a particular word. The literature also nurtures in them the skill of word attacks. So they are able to gauge the meaning of a particular word by understanding the context in which it is being placed, by understanding what does the different prefixes and suffixes convey, what shade of meaning will be given to a particular word with which kind of uh, suffix and prefix. It engages them in lots of predicting and inferencing. So with this we come to the end of this session. I hope you have now understood what are the various objectives for which we use literature. So my suggestion to you as language teachers would be that do not get disturbed when you get a complicated text in front of you, rather approach it with lots of ideas, lots of activities as to how you can present it in a more interesting and an enriching manner to your learners. I hope you have a fair idea of what are the objectives of teaching literature in the English classrooms. And I hope you have gained a number of ideas as to how you can make your literature classroom even more interesting. So with this, we come to the end of this session and we'll meet again in the next session. Till then, thank you.